This is Andy Two, and this video is part 8D, all together now, uh, of the Coco Goes to the Spa series. And I'm going to continue putting the parts back onto Coco that uh, we took off so, so for cleaning and degreasing and everything. And I'm going to just start this part with the uh, uh, hand wheel parts, the hand wheel assembly that needs to go back on and uh, to get started with it I do want to put a little bit of oil on the end of the um, arm shaft here and the threads that the um, clamp stop motion clamp nut uh, screws to. don't like to use uh, grease on any of those parts but a little oil and and I mean just a little uh, I just dip my finger in a little and rub a real light coating here on the arm shaft and the thread uh, I don't want a lot of oil on there I don't want it um, hesitating when I'm winding the bobbin or anything so just a very light coating and uh, one is so that the uh, nut will go on and off easy and the other is just for a little rust prevention back in these uh, steel parts back here and uh, sometimes I will also put a little oil just inside the part of the hand wheel that is going to slip on to that shaft mm -hmm. but I don't want any oil on the Textolite gear but before I slip the hand wheel back on there I I like to uh, grease that gear while it's out of the machine so whenever I pull it off uh, you know I usually clean it up in this case it was a full degreasing sometimes I just take a toothbrush and wipe off the old grease with a rag and so forth but um, see if I can point this down a little bit here what I, I do like to grease that gear before I put it back on because I can easily get the whole circumference of it and I use the TriFlow clear synthetic grease this is a three ounce tube, tube. Uh, you can buy smaller I don't know if you can buy bigger but I've had this tube about a year now with all the machines I do and I just use a stiff artist brush like for acrylic paint and I just get little dabs like this uh, on the end of the brush and then I just go along and brush it into the I guess what I call the teeth of that gear. If you've watched uh, some of my other videos, um, you know I don't like to over oil and grease because I don't think it does any good and it just collects uh, lint and dust and stuff like that. So on a on a freshly degreased gear like this, I might use three, maybe four four of those little uh, blobs like that and then in the future uh, it won't take that much and uh, uh, most of the instruction manuals and repair manuals for machines that have a textilite gear say once or maybe twice a year to put uh, some grease up there on the pinion gear of the end of the the motor shaft and in a later video I'm going to do a vid I mean in later in the series I'm going to do a complete video of all the oil and grease procedures and and I'll be showing that how you would do just a regular 
annual or semi-annual adding a little grease but uh, for this one again since we we just totally degrease this I want to start it out with a pretty good coating I think one more of these little blobs on here will do it I'm looking for any anything that's not a little bit shiny with some grease and you know I've certainly opened up my share of vintage machines and just found grease all over the place up at the top of a motor and the pinion gear and the hand wheel and stuff and and all different kinds of lubricants and I like many people who work on sewing machines I really like the tri flow uh, it sticks to the gears real well it doesn't get thrown off as much it's got a real high temperature rating and uh, I'm just real satisfied with it so I think that's got a nice coating now so I'm gonna call it a day with the grease there I can put that away because there's no other grease to go on up here in this area and then I'm just going to take the hand wheel and slide it onto that shaft whoops go slide it onto the shaft now since I've already put in the motor it's going to have to kind of mate with that uh, pinion gear so oops might as well put those on now um, and, and it just did it just slid all the way back and, and what you're hearing is this uh, metal ring right there hitting the back of the casting and the shaft um, bushing so it's it's going to be uh, mating just fine sometimes when you get back to that pinion gear you may have to push it back and forth a little or jiggle it or wiggle it but it's 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 in there good now so I don't have to worry about that and then uh, the next thing that's going to go on after this is the uh, clamp stop motion clamp washer and uh, this is the one that has three little uh, post tabs that that stick up there and, and that's for the clamp uh, clamp stop motion clamp stop screw to hit when you loosen the nut for a winding of the bobbin and you definitely don't want any grease on this I have found grease because that just makes it stick to parts and it doesn't function as well now uh, I live in the desert so we don't have much rust but if you'd like to put a very light coating of oil not for lubrication which this doesn't need lubrication but if you want to put a real light coating of sewing machine oil on there for rust prevention uh, feel free to do that but a real light coating you don't, you don't want it slathered in oil and, and sticking to parts up here okay and when you put it on you have a 50 50 chance of doing it uh, in the right position for the uh, stop uh, the clamp stop motion clamp stop screw to work but you must have those three little posts pointing out towards you okay and I wish I could tell you that there's some code or way to, to put it on but I really don't know of any you know guide posts to say well with this hash mark and this post in this position that works so I just put it on okay slide it on there the chance that it's going to be in the position that'll work 
then the next thing I'll do, just push that back, then I'm going to put on the actual uh, clamp stop motion clamping nut. Some people call it the silver hand wheel or the little hand wheel. Singer called it the clamp nut. And don't let it drop and hit your paint. But it's got nice big heavy threads and it'll just go right on. And next is going to be the little stop screw. It's going to go right in there. And already I can tell I put the washer on wrong because the screw is hitting one of those posts. The, the screw's like all the way on, but it's hitting the post. I won't even be able to screw it in. So, um, that's, a, that's a real easy fix. I'll just take the nut back off. And slip out the little stop screw. I'm going to pull the hand wheel back a little and then push it back forward so I can get access to this. And the way, when it's wrong, the way to correct it is to turn it 180 degrees. Either way. So I'm going to do that. And the bottom will become the top. And I'm going to slip it right back on. and then I'll put the nut on and this time I'll be able to put the stop screw in all the way and test it for a function. Okay, now let's see if I can do this. Yeah. Get a little screwdriver. I'll screw that in. It's a nice smooth fit. And I just just tighten it. It's not holding anything but the screw itself. And then to test it, I will hold the hand wheel, turn the nut to the right, and then I will see by turning the hand wheel towards the front of the machine does the needle bar engage and there it is the feed dog the needle bar everything is turning so that would be the normal sewing motion okay and then I'll come back here hold the hand wheel and turn the nut counterclockwise and it just goes a small turn until the stop screw is hitting one of those posts on the washer. So that is enough to disengage that clamp and stop the motion to the arm, but will allow the hand wheel to spin. So when I want to wind a bobbin, put the bobbin winder up, run the motor, the hand wheel will spin, and the bobbin winder friction ring will spin but if I go back to my if I go back to the needle bar the uh, needle bar and the feed dog mechanism are disengaged and the, the idea behind that is why run that mechanism uh, just to wind a bobbin and it's also if you if you have uh, you know you're in the middle of sewing and have to wind a bobbin um, you know you don't you don't want to have to uh, move all of that stuff and and run that needle bar without a bobbin and mess up everything so that's why there's a separate spool pin and and bobbin winder tension disc you can you can turn that knob disengage the needle bar and the feed dog 
uh, put your bobbin up here on the spindle run, run your thread up to it and run the motor and wind the bobbin without disturbing your needle and feed dog so now it is in the right position and so I'll turn it back clockwise hold the hand wheel and turn the nut clockwise to tighten it and that will re-engage the motion so that's why it's called a stop motion because you're, you're really stopping the motion to the arm and thereby the needle bar and the and the vertical shaft down to the feed mechanism so that's it that's uh, pretty easy and complete So, I think what I'm doing now, let me grab the uh, light lamp shade and we'll finish up with the front of the machine here. Okay. Okay. Get this, let me get this a little closer here. So, I have my nice uh, clean light lamp shade with its blue glass focusing lens in here. And... I want to make sure that uh, the little screw and clamp, let's see if I can get in the better light for you here, the screw and the clamp that hold that are snugged up nice because, you know, the machine vibrates and it can work loose over time. And then, since it's uh, metal and screw, I'll go ahead and just put a light coating of oil for rust prevention. Okay, this particular lampshade uses two screws to hold it in place, and they look like this. Okay, and I've already brushed some oil onto the screws, so I'm just going to put them in and, and start them a little bit by hand, and then I'll get this one started in there and you want to tighten them easily so you can you can get this close to all the way in so it'll hold the lampshade but don't finish tightening it and then we'll come and put the other like so and then I'll tighten that one up Let's see, I get this around here, maybe like this. Come under the camera. Hey. <laughs> and you want to be sure that that it's you know it's it's well fitting and stuff, but you want to be sure that it's on evenly. So I just get the screws a little loose and see if it wants to move. Sometimes I put them on real quick and tighten one screw all the way, then the other, and later when I turn the light on, I've seen like a crack of light up here. So I just try and get it, get it evenly, support it up, and then I will tighten the screws the last turn or two. Nice and firm, but no need to no need to pop your wrist putting it on okay that's pretty easy and we're gonna come around and I'm gonna put the uh, arm cover on but first I would like to put the nose plate on with those little hinge pins um, before I put the, the top cover on Go ahead and put my presser foot down here. So, on the inside of that, there's a uh, screw that holds in the thread guide, and there's a screw, um, a screw here that holds in a little spring that when it's closed. Um, catches catches against the uh, 
bearing here to keep the nose closed. So I, I will want to check that those maneuver a little bit here. I want to check that those screws are tight and they are and then I'm going to put a little oil just brush a little oil on here this is my softer artist brush that I just use for uh, putting oil rust prevention mm -hmm. okay then uh, remember these little hinge pins and that's what hangs in the little holes of the casting of the nose I'll get that lined up try and get that bottom one and the top one lined up and then dropped into place Make sure, did I get that bottom one? Oh, not quite. Drop it down in there. Oh. Mm -hmm. This is easier for you when you're just sitting at your own machine. There we go. Now, have I got it in there? Yeah. Okay. So then I can just close it and that little spring clamp will go along the bushing and keep it closed very easy right oh now we'll put the arm cover on and it's also a, you know easy slant assembly you remember taking it off right you see that there's some uh, hinge springs in here and you can see the little oil wicks this still has three of the little oil wicks so this one's missing I don't know where you can buy those anymore I've had people tell me they put like a folded over pipe cleaner in there uh, if you want to do that it's, it's okay with me but I don't think it's necessary because when you when you go to oil this um, you know like say on a weekly basis or however much you need to you're only going to put a drop of oil in in the future so if it falls right through onto the bearing or wherever it's supposed to go I, I don't have a worry about you know some people worry about dust and stuff and I don't I live in a very dusty place here and I've never had that kind of a problem but when I see that I do have the oil uh, wicks in there I go ahead, go ahead and put a, a couple drops of oil on there to let them resaturate because using that crud cutter you know just totally totally drain all that out and I'll come back up in here and put the drop of oil and I'll talk more about this in the later in the series when I show how to do the regular maintenance oiling and greasing but that'll do it for now everything's tight and a little coating of oil so I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to put this on at a slant because I want to slide this opening under the presser bar pressure adjusting thumb screw. I don't want it to bang on that or anything. So I'm just going to tilt the nose end of that down a little bit and make sure that it's in the right place. Then I'll bring down the hand wheel end like that wiggle it around so I know that it's seated well then I'll take my two arm cover screws I brushed a little oil on them and I'll just drop them into the openings for them 
Give them a little twist, finger twist, to make sure I've got them started. And then I'm going to tighten them up. And the same, same thing, I'm going to try and tighten them evenly. Uh, get them most of the way in. And then kind of wiggle that arm cover around, make sure it's nice and flat. And uh, sitting good. Then I'll come back and be on the hand wheel side. I'll just turn it till it first stops. I'll turn this one till it stops and then just a wee bit more to hold it and come back on the hand wheel end and just a wee bit more to hold it. Yeah. Nice good fit, nice and smooth all the way around. And on the back side here make sure that it's sitting nice and flat, it's not cockeyed or uneven or anything like that. Looks really good. So, uh, I already put the uh, throat plate back on <laughs> to do uh, some of the other functions in the early videos. So, what what's left here is just to put the uh, bobbin case on. But I think I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll show you that. Uh, you know, we, took, we took that off. I keep forgetting this is a rehab. So, let's see, how can I show this better here? Put that with the thread coming off the top left about 10 o'clock or so and I will pull that bobbin thread around until it starts to slip between the case and the spring. Is that too bright? Between the case and the spring and then I'll pull it holding the bobbin with my thumb I'll pull that thread down to the end of the spring and the little opening okay and then here's the the debate with the little a latch pointed left some people say just snap it on like that and some people say that you hold the latch open and that that is to prevent the bobbin from falling out and you slide it on that post all the way back and let the latch go and then the latch locks onto that center post now my wife disagrees with that all of her life on her 15s and 66 and 99 and 301 now she puts the bobbin in there like that and then she reaches down and puts that center uh, post in the hole and she likes to hear it kind of like snap in place like that and I think it's because on a lot of the machines she's doing it by touch more than sight so she likes she likes to hear that click when it goes on uh, me I like to do it holding the latch putting it on and pushing it back and letting the latch close and it you know up to you totally up to you so now we've taken Coco apart the parts that we wanted to uh, we've washed them degreased them pre-oiled them um, things like things like that and then I discussed some of the other parts here we put it back together so we're, we're heading into our uh, home stretch of the rehabilitation now let me see what's next here. That's the end of 8D. Let's see what's next for part 9. Oh yeah. 
Sorry, I wrote this storyboard a while back, so I had to see what, what was next for sure. But part nine at this point, uh, for people who are, uh, you know, whether you're rehabbing or restoring or your machine's in perfect condition because you are the maintenance master, but you might want to do a little upgrade. Part nine is called Let It Shine. Let It Shine. So I hope you will turn in uh, for Coco Goes to the Spa, Part 9, Let It Shine. Thanks so much for for uh, watching the series so far. I, I hope it's been worth your while, and I hope to see you again. Take care now.